Google Earth is a great tool for many different purposes. Specifically, I'm going to talk about elevations here. And unfortunately, there's currently no way, and I hope it's a feature they'll add to extract elevation data out of Google Earth Pro. This is a section of Interstate 40 near Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm going to just zoom in, and I'm going to create a line just to see the elevation data that we would like to have. And then we'll see how to use a cool a tool called GPS Visualizer to extract and export the elevation data that we want from Google Earth. So I'm going to pick a start point here. I don't really like the push pin, so I usually change this to another style. So that's the start point. This is a, a crest vertical curve. I'm very familiar with this road, so I'm picking this location because I know what to expect and we can see if that's what we actually uh, get out of this. So here's our endpoint. And I'm going to Google Earth will let you select your start point. I want to do directions from here. And then I'm going to right click the endpoint and say directions to here. And it's going to create the route. And when you export it, the default is to create some extra information. I'll show this as I go through it. But we're going to copy the current search results to my places. And now I can go down to, actually, I can get rid of this now and look at the places. So here's the route that it created, as well as some other things. So I'm going to turn off the other stuff it created. I really just want this I-40 East that it created. And in particular, I'm interested in this route. So this is the route from that start point to the end point. If you right click, you can see, you can select show elevation profile. And so again, we see this crest curve, there's an entrance grade here. And if you select this, this is roughly that entering grade. So an approximate grade of 3.5%. And then the exiting grade G2 is about negative 2.7%. And then in the center here is our crest vertical curve going up and then going down is our, our, our elevations there. And it's, it's a parabolic shape because that's what we designed for our vertical curves. But what we need, if we want to use this in Excel or for something else, currently we can't export this from Google Earth. So how do we get this information out? One way is to kind of drag along and record manually the distance and the elevation at each point. That's very tedious. So I'll show a way that we can do this much more automated. There's still some manual portion to it. And there are multiple ways you can, you can draw the line. We can actually export this route here and use this line. But the GPS visualizer and, and the export to our KMZ isn't going to give us a high enough density of points. And so what I found is that, that I want to draw my own path and I want to draw as many continuous points as possible. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to close this profile view and uh, stick with me for a minute. It's, it's not going to take too long. I'll be as quick quick as I can here. So I'm going to go to our, our start point, maybe even a little closer. And I'm going to draw a new path. So I'm going to click this button here to add path. And we're going to I'm looking for elevations here, so I'm just going to call this my elevations path and just going to drag that out of the way for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click starting at our start point and I'm going to hold that down so I get a continu as continuous of the line as I can. And I'm going to follow that purple line as closely as possible. You may have a, um, a more steady hand than I do, and that's great. So you can do a little more precision there but this should get us close to what we're looking for. Now, when I get to the edge, you can use your arrow keys to, to move over. So I'll do this a couple times where I've got to, to reset and then I'm gonna click again, hold this down again. I'm trying to stay as close as possible to that purple line. Depends how steady your hands are. So again, I'm letting go of my left mouse button so I can move across the screen if you hold it down during that that move of your mouse button it's going to drag things around a little bit so you do need to let go at that point now i'm going to again click and hold down again i 
and just continue doing this. Again, I hope at some point in the future, Google Earth may add the functionality just to directly export that elevation data. And if, if so, that will simplify this process. I'm getting a little bit off there. So if I uh, was doing this for a more precise reason, I'd try to be a little bit more careful there. Maybe even using a, a straight edge to help me get that as, as consistent and straight across as possible. But we'll see how close this will replicate that vertical alignment and allow us to do other calculations based on that. Again, just still dragging this along. We're almost to the end. We've already passed the crest portion. And because we're doing a vertical alignment, I want to stay as close to that center line as possible. And this, this density of points is really going to help us compared to what we would get if we just extracted that route. So now we went from the start point to the end point. I'm going to move this path creating tool here and just hit OK. Now at this point, it creates this the path that we just drew, elevations. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go to Save Place As. I'm going to save it in my downloads. And now we've got that KMZ file that now we can go to our GPS visualizer. So it's gpsvisualizer.com. So let me share this screen. And when we're on this, this site, we're going to do lookup elevations. So gpsvisualizer.com slash elevation. We're going, I'm just going to do this in plain text. Of course, there's multiple ways to do this. I'm going to use US units. I'm going to upload our KMZ elevations file and click convert and add elevation. We need to do a little bit of processing with this data and I'll show it when we put it in an Excel file, but you can export it. I usually just copy this out of here. So select all, you can do control A or drag like I did, then control C to copy this or right click and copy. So I'm going to open an Excel file now. I'm going to paste the values here. Now, currently, the way this is showing up, the default is to have all this in one column. So we need to do the text to columns. So if you select the data, go to data, text, the data ribbon, then text to columns. Usually, Excel is good about having identified this, and it looks like everything is correct here in these columns. So I'm going to hit finish. So it's going to pull those in the columns. A little bit of cleanup here. Uh, we don't really need the type here, so I'll probably delete that column. We've got the latitude, longitude, altitude. Uh, we don't need the rest of these columns. And then this first row, usually it adds the file name, so I want to get rid of that. Um, and maybe I'll scroll down and just take kind of a, a look. Looks like everything else is pretty clean here. So for our roadway alignment, we actually need the, the distance between our points of latitude and longitude so that we can build that center line. So I'm going to call this the, the incremental distance. And there's an equation for determining the distance between two points of latitude and longitude. So the first one, there's no first point, so the distance there is just zero. And let me grab the equation. I'll also put this equation in the comments. So the distance from this point of latitude and longitude to this, this point is 2.5 feet. And we can just drag this down. And by drew, doing these continuous points, we're going to get very high resolution, high density of points. But we really want the cumulative distance. 
That's what we're actually going to need for our alignment. We want to go, we want to know the distance along the center line. So we're going to start at that point zero, and then we're going to add the previous distance to this incremental. And this will give us the continuous distance. We probably don't need this many decimal places. So if you want to clean this up at all, you, you certainly can. Same thing with this column. Maybe you only want one decimal place. And I'll add the the units here so we make sure we know what we're using. And now we can we can create our graph from our point. So we're gonna I'm gonna insert a scatter plot. I want to select our data. So I want as our X value, we want our cumulative distance. For our Y value, we want our altitude or elevation. And let's see if this graph reproduces what we had. So yeah, this, this looks great. It looks like our, our data and our export from GPS Visualizer work really well. So again, just want to show a great tool for exporting data from Google Earth. Again, you can do other styles that would make it a little easier. It wouldn't, it does make it a lot more simple if you pull just the route. So you can do this process, or I'll go ahead and show what that looks like. So I'm going to go back to our Google Earth. Set up. And again, we created the continuous route with elevations. We could go back and do this route one as well. So that was the one that Google Earth created for us. So we're going to save this as a KMZ again. And just to show how quick this would be if you didn't need to need a higher resolution of, of points. And so you can already see the KMZ is much smaller for the route one then our continuous dragging of the that path so we're gonna can grab the same information here we see it's a lot fewer points switch back over to our excel file i'm gonna create a new sheet here and drop in our data. We're, we're going to need to do that text to columns again. Click finish, clean this up just a little bit. I'm going to pull in the equations and headings from our first sheet. And then drag this down, and we'll see again if this gives us a close enough estimate of the elevation that we could use this. And it really depends on what you're using it for. Maybe it's fine. Maybe this is going to give you enough information for you and enough of enough high enough resolution, depending on your use. This is not going to replace survey data or anything like that, but can be helpful. So in this case, this does, again, a pretty good comparison. I'm going to go back to our continuous sheet, so a lot higher resolution of data points. Uh, and this is the one from the route. So again, depending on what you're doing, this can be a good option for you for exporting elevation data.